In this presentation, we'll look at another way to use renewable energy to make electricity, and this is by, through the use of solar energy. Solar energy is a form of electromagnetic energy. The solar energy that comes through the atmosphere is uh, ultraviolet, visible, and infrared. The visible and the infrared solar radiation is very useful for making electricity. Solar energy has two forms. One is the solar energy that comes directly to the sun, so-called direct solar energy or beam solar energy. And then there's the radiation of the solar energy that hits clouds or is scattered in the atmosphere and comes from the sky and from all directions, and that's called the diffuse solar energy. The sum of those, of course, is the total solar energy. Photovoltaic or PV technology uses flat panels like those that we see the two installers installing onto the roof of this building. These flat panels can use both the direct and the diffuse solar energy, so it uses all of the solar energy. The map here for the United States shows solar radiation at different places in the United States. As you would guess, in the sunny southwest in Arizona, New Mexico, uh, California, Southern California, it's sunny uh, most of the time, therefore there's more solar radiation, but there's plenty of solar radiation even in New England or even in Seattle. So solar radiation is a commodity available throughout the country. The quantitative measure of solar radiation in Connecticut on a south-facing tilted roof is about 4.4 kilowatt hours per meter squared per day. So every square meter, which is about 10 square feet, uh, gets 4.4 kilowatt hours of electricity every day on average. PV technology uses PV cells. This is a picture of a PV cell. This is a semiconductor device. Uh, a, many of these are put together to make a PV system, but this is the primary unit. produces about a half of a, uh, a volt of electricity, and uh, current depends upon the size or the area of the cell. PV cells are joined together electrically to form PV panels. PV panels are rated by the amount of electricity they produce when exposed to full sunlight. So a PV panel might have a 100 watt rating or it might have a 500 watt rating depending on its area in uh, construction. PV panels are joined together to form a PV array. A PV array, like the one on the roof of this residence, would be rated by the amount of power the whole array could produce. A typical residential array might produce 5 kilowatts of power under strong or full sunlight conditions. Here's another residential PV array. This is actually mounted on the roof of a, of a, uh, a storage building or a barn in, uh, in Connecticut. Here's a series of PV arrays that are installed on the roof of an apartment building. So each apartment is powered by its own individual PV system with its PV array. This commercial PV array supplies electric energy for a commercial building in Willimantic. Each of these rooftop arrays are part of a grid-connected PV system. The way the grid-connected PV system works is that during the day when there's plenty of sunlight, the PV array will produce electricity which can either be used by the residents of the building or the business that the grid is connected with, or can be sold to the electric utility. At night when there is no uh, sunlight and therefore no PV generated electricity, the residents or the businesses will draw electricity from the grid just as usual. So in this sense, the grid becomes the storage for these rooftop grid-connected PV systems. The total PV system includes the array on the roof 
and a inverter and the red box shown in this illustration is an inverter that takes the DC electricity produced by the array and transforms it into AC that can be used inside the building or can be uh, connected to the grid. The grid connected PV systems that we've been looking at with roof mounted PV arrays are examples of distributed power systems. In contrast to that, there is a central power system concept, and here there's a large central power generator at the Denver airport with ground-mounted PV arrays. A similar central power system is shown here at the Sacramento Municipal Utility District generating station. And here there's a large number, in fact, 30,000 panels uh, made into a very big 6 megawatt array to generate electricity as part of the grid. PV is very rapidly growing. Current U.S. capacity is 10 gigawatts. That's equivalent to 10 large nuclear power plants. Most of this is rooftop PV. Uh, the production is about 0.4% of U.S. electricity. The 2030 target is 200 uh, gigawatts, 20 times uh, the present value, which would produce about 8% of U.S. electricity. There is a second technology that can use sunlight to produce electricity. This is called concentrating solar power. This does not use PV cells. Instead, it's a thermal mechanism that uses mirrors to focus sunlight to produce high temperatures. And we'll see how this works in some detail. Because concentrating solar power, or CSP, needs to concentrate light, it only can use the direct sunlight. It cannot use the diffuse sunlight. In other words, it can't use all of the sunlight because only the direct sunlight can be focused. Therefore, concentrating solar power only works well in areas where there's a great deal of direct sunlight. So areas which are cloudy would not be good locations for CSP. This need for clear skies for CSP is shown in this map. This is a solar map for CSP. As you can see, the areas with the best opportunity for concentrating solar power are the desert southwest of the United States, so Southern California, uh, Arizona, New Mexico, uh, kind of the best locations. Not very good in the cloudy northeast. All current and all planned future concentrating solar power CSP projects are designed for the desert southwest. Uh, there are two kinds of CSP. One uses the kind of collector shown in this picture, and the other uses the power tower concept. We'll look at both of these briefly. In the kind of CSP system shown in the previous slide, parabolic trough mirrors are used, and these are curved mirrors to focus sunlight on a black pipe, which you can see in this picture, which is inside of an evacuated tube. Uh, the, the fluid in the black pipe gets very hot, and that heat is used to produce steam. The CSP system uses sunlight to produce hot fluid. The fluid then is used to produce steam, so it's much like a coal-burning power plant. The steam is then used to turn a turbine that produces electricity. There's also a condenser, and one new element here is there are storage tanks to store the solar generated heat to be used at a later time uh, in the day, say at night. A second CSP concept is the power tower. In the power tower, sunlight is focused to the top of the tower where a fluid is heated. The fluid is then used to produce steam to produce electricity. The operation of a power tower is illustrated here. Sunlight is reflected off flat mirrors called heliostats, which focus onto the receiver at the top of the tower. Uh, the hot fluid then is used to produce steam or goes into storage. The steam, of course, is used to produce electricity, so it's much like the parabolic trough system that we looked at just a couple of slides back. 
the mirrors in the power tower system are called heliostats. These are flat and they are rotated on their base and tilted so that they direct the sunlight to the, uh, to the absorber at the top of the tower. Extremely important to the operation of a CSB system is thermal storage. Thermal storage is the stored energy that's generated during the day by solar energy and that that thermal storage energy can be used at night to produce steam and generate electricity. This means that a CSP plant can operate and produce electricity well beyond daylight hours. CSP is a new technology but there is every indication that this will be a profitable and productive way to produce electricity and the 2030 targets are to have 200 gigawatts of CSP that's equivalent to 200 nuclear power plants that will produce about 7% of the electricity needed by the United States at that time.